The Cincinnati Reds were a very fun team to watch last year, but maybe one of their players that got lost in the shuffle was Jonathan India. I mean, they have so many infielders. They have a lot of options in the pipeline, and he's one guy on the trade block, and the Jays might be targeting him. Is he a good fit? Is he not a good fit? We'll break that down and much more on this episode of Jays Digest. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Rio, and it's alongside host, Nick Kotz. We're still awaiting the first move of the offseason for the Toronto Blue Jays. And for those of you that may have seen Ben Nicholson-Smith's article the other day, he said that that first move may come after the holidays. Don't know which holiday, but uh, that signifies to me that nothing is def- is like necessarily close here to materializing. And I think Ross Atkins is waiting for the perfect move and waiting to pounce on a GM that is going to sell for pennies on the dollar. But Jonathan India is one guy that keeps getting brought up in trade discussions. Nick, I'm not the biggest fan of him. I'll get that out of the way right now. I think he would be an okay fit, but not necessarily the player that the Blue Jays need at this current stage of their team building process. Yeah, reports are coming out that the Jays do have interest in it. Before we do get to that, a quick reminder to hit the subscribe button. About 70% of you guys aren't subscribed and we're on the road to 12,000. Now, Peter, this report originally surfaced from Elliott Baseball, a couple of different reporters as well. Uh, Morrissey mentioned it as well, but it says the Blue Jays have expressed interest in Reds infielder Jonathan India per Elliott Baseball. And like you said there in the uh, in the intro, I'm. Uh, this is probably not going to be a video if you're a Jonathan India fan that is going to please you. I'm personally also not a fan of Jonathan India. There's a lot of things, a lot of reasons for that. But Peter, what are your thoughts on this initial report? I was a little bit surprised that he was even brought up and mentioned with the Blue Jays given all of the infielders we have. We have Santiago Espinal. We have all of these guys. Uh, Davis Schneider, Kevin Biggio. Jonathan India, yes, he did win. Uh, he was a Rookie of the Year type player, but he hasn't really been great the past couple years. No, he hasn't been great, and he's awesome at home, but he plays in one of the more hitter-friendly ballparks in all of baseball. His numbers on uh, at home, in his home ballpark, are substantially better than what they are on the road, and, and he's a below-average hitter on the road. I think his uh, OPS plus, the average is 100, the league average, and he's below that on the road. So he struggles to hit in other ballparks. He's, um, he's great. He's great at home, but most people are great at Cincinnati and uh, it's easier to hit over there. It's just been proven one of the more hitter friendly ballparks. And when it comes to fit, I think the Jays, you touched on it, Nick, they have so many infielders already. David Schneider, Kevin Biggio, Santiago Espinal, and all those guys are as it stands right now, they're fighting for that same spot. They're fighting for that second base spot. And you're adding another one into the fold when you don't have a third baseman, when you don't have a left fielder, when you don't have a designated hitter. So to me, I think they're looking in the wrong direction. I doubt that they have any serious interest in Jonathan India. He might be a piece that you could add and maybe sure up some things like offensively. He is better offensively than Biggio, probably even better than Davis Schneider. But uh, I do you want to give up much to get him? I don't know how highly the Reds value him. I wouldn't give up really anything of significance to get him because you can cover his production with the players that you have right now. So it just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, and Chris Black had a very interesting article about it. He, uh, he does some great work there. And he basically said exactly what you said. He's a very good hitter, specifically at home. He's a very fairly poor defender. He has a bad arm, bad footwork, whatever. Um, the events analytics don't work with them. And I also saw this tweet, and this is an interesting point to bring up here. And India is that it seems the asking price is obviously based on the assumption that he's a great player and there's a pathway that he could be a great player. And there's been a lot of reports, Peter, and I know I mentioned this before we started recording, that maybe Manoa or Kikuchi would be involved in a package for Jonathan India. Who knows if it would be just for Jonathan India. But would you be willing to give up a guy like Alec Manoa or you say Kikuchi? I would lean towards Alec Manoa in the sense of that's probably the more likely guy that does uh, get traded if if it is for Jonathan India. To me, it's a hard no, but there are a lot of conversations being had. Maybe not a one-for-one swap. Maybe there'd be some other players, but uh, I'm a, I mean, I'm a Noah for position player swap is something that Ross has experienced with in the past, but I don't know if I'd be willing to give up either of those guys for a guy of India's caliber, albeit a solid hitter, a great season in his rookie year, but horrific defender, to be quite honest with you, and uh, he plays in a hitter-friendly ballpark in Cincinnati. Well, when it comes to Alec Manoa... Did not did Ross Atkins not say that if you're trading for him, you're trading for the guy who finished third in yeah. Cy Young voting? You're not trading for a guy with a six ERA. So I think a guy who 
is in the Cy Young conversation is going to get you a little bit more than Jonathan India on the trade market. And and John um, and Alec Manoa to me untouchable, untouchable this off season. You got to let him prove himself. I know that he was horrible last year. He may not ever get back to the heights that he experienced in 2022, but you got to let him try. You got to let him try because he's young. He's on a cheap, controllable contract. Why would you just give an asset like that away? Like starting pitchers that can eat innings and be there for you for the long haul are very hard to find. So Alec Manoa, to me, is a total non-starter. I'm not looking to trade him. Say what you want about him. Say what you want about his attitude. But you got to give him a chance to prove himself. And by all signs that we've had this offseason, he's putting in the work. And he's ready to go. He's already further along than he was last offseason. So that's great to see. And India, I, I wouldn't even give up anything of significance for him. I'll reiterate it again. Not yeah. Kikuchi, not Manoa, not Biggio, no one. I, I'm not giving up anyone on my major league team and making my squad worse to get Jonathan India. Um, maybe I'll give up Espinal if you want to do that, but... Um, Maybe I might be undervaluing him as well. I don't know. Maybe um, people are going to come after us in the comments, Nick. But I'm just not a big fan of his game. The defense isn't there. He's a second baseman. doesn't really matter. But the Jays need something more. But he's not going to solve their problem. He also can't play third base for what it's worth. I know a lot of fans are out there asking. And Peter, I agree with you. Obviously, second base is one of the less valuable defensive positions. But, Peter, if I linked you this video that's a minute and 30 seconds long of all the different errors you had or he had, mm -hmm. it would uh, it would be a hard sell. And, again, not to completely hate in India, he is still a very valuable player. And we mentioned how Manoa and Ross Atkins is valuing him as a Cy Young winner. There's a chance the Reds are valuing Jonathan India as that rookie of the year type player with an 800-plus OPS guy. Obviously, last season, he had an improved year from his 2022, so there is some stuff there. He is a good hitter. He would be the best hitter out of the bunch, uh, depending on what you you know think of David Schneider to a degree. And looking at some of the trade values here, I didn't throw Alec Manoa in here because it's an interesting one. I've seen lots of fans saying that maybe they would even do Alec Manoa for India just because they're done with Alec Manoa. So let us know what your thoughts are on that. I think me and Peter agree with the same uh, way here. But India still has a fair bit of value on this. He's under control for a while. He has a 12 you know, median value, and this is kind of a package I just threw up. I don't think I would do this trade, but, you know, there's Benia, Cook, Dowdy. The thing is, is I would give up a fringe prospect for uh, Jonathan India just to sure up that spot if they're going to trade one of the other players, but other than that, I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, unless there's some, even if it's a catastrophic relationship issue between Alec Manoa, I would not do it for Jonathan India. I'd much rather go after some uh, some other guys, maybe the Cardinals have or something like that, but I don't know. I see it uh, I see it on Twitter often that Manoa maybe would be a part of this package in the, for India, but that's a no-go for for me, do you have any thoughts on maybe this package? Not necessarily these exact just, players, but prospects of this ilk. I just can't understand why we're so quick to just shove Alec Manoa to the side. Why are we forgetting what he did in his first two years in the big leagues? It doesn't make sense to me. It would just be bad business to get rid of a guy when he's at his absolute lowest value for someone who hasn't been good since his rookie year, Jonathan India had a 705 OPS the year after his rookie season, and then he had a, a 740 last year. So he hasn't been good. Uh, he's a below average hitter with horrible defense and just not someone that moves the needle for the Blue Jays. They, Like I said, they already have like three Jonathan Indias on their team. And if they bring back Whit Merrifield, then they have four. So this is the type of player profile that the Blue Jays have to get away from. This is what hurt them. Guys that can hit for contact, that don't have power, that are expected to be one of your main guys in the middle of the order. That's where the Blue Jays got in trouble. Whit Merrifield hit in the fifth spot, in the sixth spot, way too many times last season. If you get Jonathan India, it's going to be the same story yet again. This guy's going to be in your lineup every day. He doesn't play a premium position by any stretch, but he's going to be relied upon just because of what you gave up to get him. So total non-starter for me to, get, to give away Alec Manoa. I'm, I'm just baffled that this is even a conversation that keeps coming up over and over again. It doesn't make sense to me. Like, I'm, I'm not a GM. I will probably never be a GM in Major League Baseball. But Nick, to me, it just sounds totally stupid when you want to trade a guy who was terrible last year but great the two years prior for 
nothing for something that won't even equal his value if he manages to get back to a sort of semblance of his old self. It, it's ridiculous to me. Yeah, I agree. And that'll wrap it up. Let us know in the comment section what your thoughts are on uh, on this. I tend to agree with you. We're both. I mean, it seems like maybe we're hating on Jonathan India. It's just not the type of player that makes me excited whatsoever. And again, like we said, we have Davis Schneider, who is arguably could be a better player than Jonathan India next year, especially on the defensive end. So it's a no-starter for me, especially regarding, obviously, Alec Manoa, but maybe a fringe prospect or two if they want to throw in. I don't know. I don't even, I don't know. I don't want Jonathan India. Do any of you guys want Jonathan India? Let us know in the comment section below. With that, I'll wrap it up. Any quick final thoughts, or are you good on the uh, on the India front? I'm good. I've said what I had to say. All right. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to check out our video on your screen right now, make sure to click that, and we'll see you tomorrow.